okay during this uh, previous uh, session we basically discuss about the Thevenin theorem so as a conclusion so the uh, idea of Thevenin theorem is this so if you have a, like a complex circuit so if you have a complex circuit so we simplify this complex circuit to a circuit having a voltage source and a series resistor so the value of this voltage source is given by the term one in voltage mgh which is actually equals to the open circuit voltage across this a and b terminals and the uh, resistance is the thevenin resistance which is actually equals to the equivalent resistance across a and b so this is the basic of thevenin theorem so whatever the circuit can be transformed into a, a simple circuit containing a voltage source and a, a series resistor so the next way of dealing the circuit is so we can use Norton theorem. Norton theorem. So what is the difference between Norton and theorem? So we will uh, first discuss how to get the Norton equivalent circuit. Similarly, so you have a circuit, you have a complex circuit which we want to convert it to a Norton equivalent model so the uh, Norton equivalent model so we have current source and a parallel resistor so what we uh, basically do is we simply convert this uh, complex circuit into a current source and a parallel resistor RF. So how do you get those stuff? So Rn is actually equals to the R equivalent across this terminals. So which is very similar to the uh, way we followed in the Thevenin model. So you have to remove the uh, impact of this entire sources. So we basically replace the volt, uh, independent voltage sources with the uh, short circuit element and independent current sources with the uh, open circuit element and we can simply reduce the circuit to a different level and then we can calculate the equivalent resistance across R and A and B which is actually equals to the Norton equivalent resistance for this case so, so what is actually the uh, Norton current so it's actually the short circuit current across this no so we, we initially we remove the load from the rest of the circuit and define these two nodes as a and b so once you short circuit these nodes a and b so the current flow through these nodes is actually the short circuit current we just short circuit this a and b and find out the current flow through the uh, through this path so this is the Norton currents I n actually equals to I short circuit through this A to B terminals. So if you want to find the Norton equivalent circuit, we basically need to find the Norton equivalent resistance, which is actually uh, exactly same as the Thevenin equivalent resistance as well as the equivalent resistance uh, across this A and B. So the value of the current source in Norton equivalent model is actually the short circuit current across this A and B term. Okay. So then we uh, so we have two circuit. One is this uh, Thevenin. So this is actually Thevenin circuit. 
So this this is Tevan in equivalent model. Tevan in equivalent model. So this is actually not an equivalent model. So we have two models. So how do you uh, interrelate these two models? So let's assume. So we have a circuit. So now the circuit is this. So we have a voltage source and a resistor. So if you want to convert this into equivalent not in model, so we have to find the equivalent resistors. So then we can simply uh, replace this source with a zero volt. So then it becomes short circuit. So then we have this kind of uh, modules. So these two terminals are A and B and we have RTH here and this is actually short circuit because we set the value of the voltage source to zero. So then the equivalent resistance would be R equivalent is actually RTH and which is actually equals to R and not in resistance also the same. So then we need to find the open circuit voltage across this two term sorry so now we need to convert it to not, not an equivalent model so then what we can do is we can connect these two terminals and find the short circuit current so which is equal to the normal current so this is short circuit current so we are converting this Thevenin equivalent model to Norton equivalent model. So then to evaluate the Norton equivalent current, so we have to evaluate the short circuit current across A and B. We just short circuit these two terminals and find out the Norton equivalent current. So then we have a circuit like this. So we have a source and a resistance. So again we can have a kind of a close to having a voltage source of ETH and a resistance of RT. So the short circuit current, this current is actually equals to the voltage divided by the resistance RT. So then we basically calculate the not an equivalent current and the not an equivalent resistance. So then we can convert this Thevenin circuit. So we can convert this Thevenin circuit. So this is our Thevenin circuit. This is the Thevenin circuit. So we have a source and this is the Thevenin resistance and this is the Thevenin voltage. So this is equivalent to the Norton model. Okay. So the current flow through this is actually IN. IN is actually equals to ATH divided by RTH and this resistance equals to RTH. So this is A, this is B, this is A and this is B. So if you have this Thevenin in equivalent model, we can immediately convert it into a, a not an equivalent model. Similarly, you can convert the not an equivalent model back to Thevenin as well. So these two are possible. So what is the advantage of having these two models? So see, so for the Thevenin model, we have voltage sources and the re series resistors. But in Norton model, we have current sources and parallel resistors. So if you if you want to convert that circuit uh, by assuming that you need to apply the uh, curve of voltage law. So then ideally you can use this Thevenin equivalent model. Then you can convert the uh, rest of the circuits with uh, so uh, voltage sources and series resistors. So if you are planning to apply like uh, curve of current flow, so then the ideal uh, approach is to use not an equivalent because then whatever the circuit can be transformed into current sources and parallel resistors. So this is 
so if you, if you basically plan to apply curve of voltage law this is the ideal model so if you plan to apply curve of current law this is the ideal model ideal approach so that's why we need this not an equivalent model as well at the same time so if you find this kind of a combination in a circuit so if you have current sources and parallel resistors and if you again want to apply curve of voltage law so what we can simply do is rather keeping this com this block as it is we can convert it into this uh, equivalent theorem model for example so let's assume this so we have current source and a parallel resistor and here we have a voltage uh, resistor and a voltage source v this is i r1 r2 so if you want to apply gauge of voltage law ideal way is rather applying direct uh, curve of voltage law directly so this is very simple this is a, this may not be the ideal example for this particular case but what i want is i want to highlight the impact of this so you may have this kind of arrangement so rather writing this uh, curve of voltage law equation immediately what we can do is we can simply isolate this circuit from the rest of the circuit so then you feel like this is almost equivalent to the not an equivalent model so we can convert this into a voltage source and a series resistor so then this vth is actually i into r1 so the voltage value is i r1 this is actually r1 so then you can plug it to the original circuit again and find the values so this is v this is r2 so then it's very simple to deal with similarly if you want to apply curve of current law so see this block so this is actually very similar to the thevenin equivalent model so you can simply transform this to this kind of a model resistance and a kind of a current source so then we can easily apply curve of current source because then it's something like that so you have one source here and another source here and two resistors are in parallel so then we can easily apply curve of current flow so keep in mind you can simply identify these kind of combinations pattern in the circuit and if if you really want to convert it so you you are free to convert this circuit into different level or simplify the circuit using them and in a not and apply appropriate uh, or follow appropriate uh, approaches so i am not recommending writing curve of voltage law curve of current law by looking at the circuit so just see like sometimes you don't need to apply curve of voltage law current law so you can simply get the uh, final solutions by applying just voltage divide or current divider rule no need to go for this complex analysis if you really identify the tricky or this hidden or parts in this circuit then you can easily convert those circuits to kind of a soluble uh, levels and now or else you can simplify the circuit to a level you can deal with very simple arithmetic so we'll try one example so this is a simple example so it's in the slide so I just uh, draw this circuit here. So you have one resistor, and you have another resistor, and a voltage source here. So this is actually nine volt. So this is three ohm. This is six ohm. So you are asked to evaluate the not an equivalent model for this given circuit. So how do you get the uh, not an equivalent resistance so you can simply uh, remove these sources or you can simply set the values of the sources to zero so this is a 
independent voltage source you can simply replace it with short circuit element then the equivalent circuit would be something like that so this is a b this is six this is three so by looking at this you can simply say that the equivalent resistance or r equivalent or the Norton equivalent resistance is actually six parallel three so this this is actually the parallel combination of 3 ohm and 6 ohm together. So this is simply say that uh, 3 into 6 divided by 3 plus 6. This is 2 ohm. So this is equal to 2 ohm. So how do you find the not an equivalent current then? So you need to short circuit this. So you have to short circuit these two terminals and find the short circuit current. So how do you find the short circuit current? So once you short circuit these A and B terminals, so you can observe that you can't see any current flow through this plug. This is actually zero because the, all the time the current flow through the minimum resistance part. So once you short circuit that. So the resistance would be ideally zero so then you can't see any current flow through the six ohm resistor so whatever the current is simply flow through the short circuit part so then your circuit is reduced to this so you have a nine volt source and three ohm resistor here you have nine volt source and this is the short circuit current so the 6 ohm is no, no more in the circuit because there won't be any current flow through this one so you can simply remove it from the circuit because there won't be any impact from that particular resistance so then I short circuit the short circuit current would be actually 9 divided by 3 so this is 3 amperes so then the not an equivalent circuit for this particular scenario is like this So you have a current of 3 amperes and resistance of 2 ohm. So this is you know, A and B. So this 3 ampere flow through this path and it creates a kind of a potential drop equation. So this is the not an equivalent. This is the not an equivalent circuit module. So I believe like you can have kind of a simple idea about the Thevenin equivalent model and not an equivalent model. So you can identify the uh, identify where you can promote not an equivalent and Thevenin. So it's depend on the requirement and the situation. By looking at the requirement or situation, you can simply identify whether I'm following this Thevenin or not.